Men are excited, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, good God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Anyhow. I'm gonna ask brother, there's a there's a song I want to play before we, I get started this morning, amen. We're gonna play it. I'm not gonna sing it. We're just gonna listen to it. But I want you to pay attention to the words, amen. This morning the question is, how many of you are hungry? Hallelujah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, mighty God, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your love, your goodness, and your mercy, God. Lord, that you would just have your way in us this morning, Lord God, that your spirit may just move, Lord God. Lord, we just ask that you just feed us this morning, Lord God, and I'd be careful to give you all the honor and the glory, Lord Jesus. Lord, help me to put myself aside because it is your word and not my word, Father. I thank you, God, once again, Lord God. I thank you for everything you do, for your spirit and your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, just have your way in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Simply entitled this message, If Ye Abide in Me. And if you'd be so kind to open your Bibles to the book of John. The book of John, chapter 15. And verse 14. I'm sorry, in verse 7. John chapter 15, verse 7. John chapter 15, and we're going to start in verse 7. Juan, capítulo 15, versículo 7. If you have it, please say amen. Amen. And it reads as this. If ye abide in me, and it, my words abide in you, ye shall ask whatever ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Hearing is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and then your joy might be full. You may be seated. Hallelujah. If ye abide in me, and my word abide in you, ye shall ask whatever ye will, and it shall be done. Hallelujah. How many this morning desire to abide in the presence of the Lord? Hallelujah. Oh my God. How many this morning, hallelujah, understand where you are, hallelujah. Understand who you are, hallelujah. The one that lives inside of you. The one that gave you hope. The one that gave you a chance this morning. The one that woke you up out of your bed. The one that gave you life. 
the one that is giving you healing, the one that is giving you joy, the one that is put you in your right mind. Hallelujah. So I say once again, how many want to abide in the presence of the Lord? Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank you, Jesus. You know, the song talks about being hungry for God, hungry for his presence, hungry for his fragrance, hungry for his power. I don't know who's convinced with me this morning. I don't know how you sit, how you feel this morning, what is going on in your life this morning. But understand one thing, hallelujah. The scripture says, it says, if ye abide in me, and my word abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. So I say once again, how many want to abide in the presence of the Lord? How many have something that is the desire of God this morning? How many have a, have a question that they want to answer? Have a need that they need a, a, the, re, the response for? You see, when you abide in the presence of the Lord, that's a wonderful thing. To be able to go before God and just lay it all out before him. Uh -huh. Just to be able to say, Lord, here it all is. I don't know what you're going to do with it. Because I can't do with it. I can't do anything with it for myself. But you, here it is. I place it before you. You say, whatever I ask, hallelujah. It shall be done in my name, hallelujah. So how come we can't go before the Lord this morning? And just say, Lord, I want to abide in you. Have your way in me. Oh, fill me with your presence. Let me smell your feet, your sweet fragrance. Oh, let your power move this morning. Got to understand who it is that you are this morning. You're not just anybody. You've been chosen for a reason and for a purpose. Come on now. We are here for a reason and for a purpose. Yes. Not just for sitting in these benches. Not just to come over here and sing a little bit and, 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 and listen to whatever the speaker has to say and then get out of here and go home and have breakfast. Mercy. No, we are here to receive something from the Lord. Yes. We are here to abide in the presence of God. We are here to give our hearts unto Him, to lift our voices unto Him, to give our, our hearing unto Him. Hallelujah. Because it is Him that desires to abide with us, to live inside of you, to do something for you. Yes. Hallelujah. Abiding in Him brings conviction. Come on. Mercy. Mercy. Yes. I said abiding in him brings conviction. Yes. How many are convicted this morning? Who, Lord. In the book of Acts, in chapter 2 and verse 37, mm -hmm. after Peter went on about all the things that God had done and shown them and shared with them, poured out his heart, Showed him his love and his mercy. Hallelujah. Showed him miracle, signs, and wonders. Hallelujah. And all they could say, because they were pricked in their heart. Yes. All they could say was, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts. And said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Good God. They were convicted. Because they knew the one that was on the cross. The one that died that day. And the one that was going to rise on the third day. Hallelujah. The one that gave and shed his blood for you. The one that took all the shame, the persecution, the murmuring, the backbiting, the beating. Hallelujah. The one that was on that cross. Hallelujah. The one, hallelujah, that gave his life for all of us, hallelujah. Whoa. He touched their hearts that day, and 
they said, what shall we do? Come on now. They were convicted. Mm -hmm. What is your conviction this morning? What is convicting us this morning? What's got our attention? Mm. Where is our mind at right now? Praise be to God. Come on now. When God gets a hold of you, and he begins to put his little finger, his big old finger inside of you and start stirring you up. Oh, glory, glory. Woo! Mercy, Lord. Glory. And the conviction of the things that we have given ourselves into. Yeah. And the conviction of the stuff that we entertain in our lives. Yeah. And the stuff that we shouldn't be doing. The thoughts that go through our minds. The things that come out of our mouths. Yeah. Where is our conviction this morning? Come on now. We need to abide. In the presence of God on a daily basis. Hallelujah. Because of the things that he can do for you. And for the thing he already has done for you. Because he's already gave it all. A price that you can never repay. Our blood is, if it spills, it's nothing. They can't save me. They can't do anything for me. My, my blood. My uh -huh. The blood that has power and authority and washes and cleanses white as snow. Come on. It says in Acts chapter 24 and 25, it says, And as, the reason, as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time when I have Convinced, convenient season, I will call for thee. Uh -huh. He reasoned. Hallelujah. He understood that there was something, hallelujah, that he needed to be doing. Said, and after certain, after a certain days, when Felix came with his wife Jerusalem, which was a Jewess, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. And as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled. I mean, you know that when you go before the Lord. Everything's just right there. Right. And that's what causes the conviction. That's what causes us to think about where we are and our, what we're doing. If it says, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. There was something. Come on, man. There was something that he knew that he wasn't ready for. He was convinced, convicted. But he knew what Paul had to say. He knew what Paul had to bring. Amen. It says he hoped for. He hoped also that money should have been given him of Paul, that he might lose him. Wherefore he sent for him to oft, sent for him the often, oft, the oftener, and communed with him. But after two days, Perseus Festus came to Felix's room, and Felix, willing to show the Jews a pleasure, left Paul. They couldn't get it. What is our conviction at this morning? Come on, huh? What are we hanging on to that continues to bother us? Come on, huh? What's holding us back from dwelling in the presence of why, when we hear about the good things of the Lord, we begin to fear with fear. Not fear of reverence, but fear with fear and a different type of fear. When you fear the Lord, it's reverence. You're reverencing that God is holy and righteous. But when you have the other fear, mm -hmm. that brings shame right. and guilt. And it begins to bother us and disturb us in our hearts and in our minds. 
because we know that there's something off in us. Thank God for conviction. Because that's what keeps us going on that straight path. When we know that we're not doing right and we begin to get pricked in our heart. And so we know we got to get back on that, on that narrow path, the straight path. Not looking to the right, not looking to the left, but keeping our eye on the Lord. Hallelujah. We need that conviction inside of us. Hallelujah. How many expected anything this morning when you got to when you came to the house of the Lord? Come on. How many had a certain sense of expectation? Okay. Yeah, we just come in here for roll call this morning, so we went in here. Where I didn't get a phone call. I don't know about you, but I come here expecting something from the Lord every time Amen. I walk through those doors, because that's the way we should come before God, expecting. Something to happen, amen. Expecting an answer, expecting a blessing, yeah. expecting a touch of Him in our life, hallelujah. Expecting whatever it is that He has in store for us, hallelujah. Good, bad, or indifferent. Yeah. We have come to this house for a reason and for a purpose yeah. to expect a move of God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says in 2 Kings chapter 2 and 9, it says, And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what shall I do for thee before I be taken away from thee? What can I do for you before I'm gone? Because I'm going to be gone. And Elisha walked with Elijah and walked and seen he was just like his, his sidekick, amen? Mm -hmm. And he watched all that God had done in his life. Yes. Come on. Hallelujah. How can we just stand around and be spectators and watching God bless somebody else? Hallelujah. When we need a blessing for ourselves. Hallelujah. Yes. When we need to get a hold of God for ourselves. Hallelujah. When we see the miracles happening for somebody else and we Come just on. stand there and we clap because we're thankful that God's doing something in their life. Come but on. don't we want something done in our life as well? Or are we just living on yes. somebody else's expectations? Hallelujah. Are we living on somebody else's miracles? Hallelujah. You see, those are there for us to get a hold of and yes. say, Lord, one day, God, I want also be yes. a double portion. Yes. Come on now. Hallelujah. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Oh, Woo, hallelujah. hallelujah. Yes. He wanted a double portion of what Elijah had. He wanted a double portion of the power and the authority and the blessing that Elijah had. He oh. wanted also in his life. Yes. But he just wasn't satisfied for what he had. He wanted more. Ooh, hunger for your hunger for your presence hunger for your fragrance hunger for your power who do you hunger for this morning are we hungry for God are we hungry for our own selves hallelujah if you abide in me hallelujah hallelujah Woo. it's an awesome thing when you understand who it is that you serve. Come on. Because ain't nothing can get you down. And right. nothing can hold you back. Right. Because when God says, go do this. And the spirit begins to stir inside of you. Then you can't stop yourself. You can't contain it. You got to fulfill what God wants to do in your life. Because he's directing you. Hallelujah. And you want to abide in that spirit of God. Come on. Amen. Yes. Oh, give me my double portion, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, have your way in me, God. Do what you will. So, here's like my hunger. Hunger that hurts. How many of you have been so hungry that it hurts? Come on. And we're struggling and we're trying to find something to eat. We even get hangry. <laughs> hungry, angry, because we're angry, because we're hungry. 
Why can't we get be like that for the Lord? <laughs> Why can't we desire the Lord in that manner? When you get that warm bowl of beans and cheese and frijol with the with the jalapeno all chopped up and onion. Oh. What do we hunger for this morning? Where do we want to abide? Where are we at? What is our expectation of the Lord this morning? He's just waiting. He's just waiting for us. We're not waiting for Him. Because if we were really waiting for Him, we would be getting a hold of Him. We would be calling upon Him right now. If it was that bad, we would be seeking Him right now. Yes. Hallelujah. What's our expectation this morning? Hallelujah. It says, for our, our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. That when we meditate and we're doing our conversation with the Lord, there is nothing that can disturb you. There is nothing that can get in the way. Because Hallelujah. it's just you and him communion with one with another. And then you don't want to stop because it feels so good when he's there and he's blessing you in with his spirit. And then you're just saturated, man, before him. And you're just talking to him. And you're just giving it all out. You're letting it all out. Hallelujah. Yes. Because he's the only one that's not going to tell you to shut up. You're talking too much. He's going to just say, just tell me what you have to tell me so I can do what I got to do in you. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Expectation for the Lord. Mm -hmm. To be hungry for him. To abide in him. To be set apart. To abide in him is to be convicted. We need to be set apart from this place. We need to be set apart from the things that will drag us down. Mm -hmm. We need to put our mind on God. It says in Galatians chapter 2 and 20, it says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God, whom loved me, and gave himself for me. Amen. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet I not I, but Christ liveth in me. How can Christ live in us? At least we allow him to have his way in us. To remove those things that continue, that continue to hinder us. We need to be vessels. Vessels that can carry a pure God. Come on. So we have to constantly be cleaning ourselves. So that He can abide in us. Because He we are the temple of the living God. You see, before not everybody can enter that place, the holies of holies. Come on. They couldn't go in there. There was a certain rituals that they had to do. Certain things that the certain steps that they had to take that had to take place in order for them to continue to purify themselves so that they could get ready to enter into the curtain. And even then there wasn't even a guarantee that they were gonna be okay when they got in there, that they weren't gonna be consumed. You they had to make sure that they were truly fully ready to enter the presence yes. of the Lord. But you see, now, thank God, because we are under the dispensation of grace, hallelujah, and we are no longer bound by the law. Yes. We can go before the Lord in any condition that we find ourselves, yes. and we can suck with Him and cry unto Him and be one with Him, hallelujah, and He will cleanse us and purify us for His honor and for His glory. That's what we're created for. For him. We are a bunch of dirty vessels, but he decides to be inside of us. Hallelujah. He desires to cleanse us up.
so he can use us. Hallelujah. What amazing and loving God that we serve, that he desires that we abide in him because he's a jealous God. This is why he created us so that we can be communion with him, so that we can just seek and search and draw nigh unto him. Come on. Set apart. We're set apart. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you do. Come on, man. Thank you for your mercy. First Peter chapter 2 and 9 says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praise of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. <clears throat> See, he's no discerner of person. It doesn't matter what manner of walk that you used to walk. When God gets a hold of you, watch out. Because he's drawing us out of so many different walks of life. So many different places we have, all of us have come from. Because he gave us and he opened up salvation unto us. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are adopted into that chosen generation. Come on. Amen. Praise God that he adopted us. That alone should make you want to stand and shout and give glory unto yeah. God. Because he's chosen you. Hallelujah. With his people, with his children, he has opened up salvation unto us. Hallelujah. Come on now. Oh, peculiar people, that ye should show faith, show forth the praises. How many can praise God this morning? Just praise God a little bit. Let's get a hold of him. Say thank you, Jesus. Oh, let God's spirit move. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've been changed because you've been drawn out of darkness into his marvelous light. Ooh, I'm so glad that I've been changed. I'm so glad that he got a hold of my mind and turned me around. I'm so glad that he took all those addictions from me. I'm so glad that he showed me his love and his mercy. I'm so glad I don't have to go digging through garbage cans anymore. But he feeds me. He got the roof over my head. I don't have to worry about where I'm going to get where I'm going to get my drugs from because I don't want to have the craving. He's broken that from me. He's given me liberty. He's given me freedom. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we just got to get a hold of God so that we can abide in Him. Be hungry for Him. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 5 and verse it says in verse 6 Humble yourselves, therefore, unto the mighty hand of God, that ye, that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Resi whom resist steadfast in the faith. Resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Amen. But the God of all grace, who had called us unto his eternal glory by Jesus Christ, after that ye have suffered a while, Make you perfect, established, strengthened, settle you. One day, we're going to be perfect. Come on. Hallelujah. One day, we're going to be established. Come on now. 
One day you're going to be straightened. Hallelujah. How come we can't just get with the program? Why do we struggle so much? Hallelujah. To abide in the presence of the Lord. To hunger for Him and all that He wants out of us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We also need to examine ourselves. Brother G, what does all this got to do with hunger for the Lord and being the... How do we want to present ourselves before God? What do we want to give Him? We get dressed up to go to dinner. We get dressed up to go to the store. We get dressed up to go to school, to work. We want to be presentable. How do we want to go before God? Don't we want to be our best before Him? Come on. Hallelujah. That's so why we need to examine ourselves. We need to make sure that we're presentable. Hallelujah. And that doesn't mean getting dressed up in fancy clothes. That means disrobing yourself before God and leaving all the dirt behind you. And just saying, Lord, I present the best that I have in me. Oh, here I am with all that I am. Come on. Just go ahead and have your way in my life. Have your way in me. Because I know that after I get up off after my knees, hallelujah, oh, you're going to have done something inside of me. And if you don't feel that way, after you get out of prayer, hallelujah. Maybe you should stay on your knees just a little bit longer. Yes. Maybe you should stay in the Word just a little bit longer and read what it is that God has done. Hallelujah. Examination. Psalms chapter 139 and verse 23 says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me. You and know my thoughts. Woo! Woo -hoo. Come on. What's going through your head? What do you what, what do you what do you think the Lord is looking at right now? And see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. Come on now. Self examination. Thank God that he shows us what he wants out of us. Hallelujah. Because there's no guessing. If you know your Bible and you read your Bible, there is no guessing. Come on. There's no wondering what and why. Because it's right there before you. That's how he comforts us. That's how he gets a hold of us. Hallelujah. Self-examination. Second mm -hmm. Corinthians chapter two, verse cha chapter thirteen and five. Because the way he deals with me, he had to get a hold of me. Amen. Hallelujah. You, Hallelujah. Examination. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse says, Examine yourselves. Whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves. Ye know not your own selves. How that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate. But trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Now I pray to God that ye do no evil. Not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, through we be as reprobates. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak, and ye are strong. And this also we wish, even your perfection. Therefore I write these things, being absent, least being present, I should use sharpness according to the power of me, 
to edification and not to destruction. God just wanted me to know that he wasn't condemning me so that we may abide in him. I encourage you, hungry for the Lord this morning, that hunger that hurts, mm. the hunger that weakens, that type of hunger that brings desperation. So many things we wrap ourselves up into that we feel that way for. I have it. We have to have it. It don't matter if it's good for us or not, but we have to have it. Mercy. That same type of hunger, he had to get a hold of me to share this word. Hallelujah. I encourage you this morning. Let us be hungry for God. Let us seek to abide in his presence. Hallelujah. Let us abide in him daily. Come on. Not just for five minutes, not just for ten minutes, or the half hour, or whatever it is that you get a hold of him, but daily, all day long. Meditate on the Lord. Come on. When you're having issues, praise him when these are going well. Exalt him when you have trouble, and exalt him when there is no trouble. Hallelujah. Exalt him when you're sick, and exalt him when you're healed. Hallelujah. Because it is him that is going to see you through. It is him that is going to heal your body. It is him that is going to meet your need. Hallelujah. It is him that is going to have his way in your life. So be encouraged this morning because he doesn't wish that you perish. Hallelujah. But that you'll be strengthened in his power and in his might and in his mercy. Hallelujah. That you might find joy. That you may find the peace that you need and the love that you desire. Hallelujah. So that you can abide in him wholeheartedly. Hallelujah. This altar is open this morning. Hallelujah. When you come up up here, hallelujah, just ask that he have his way in your life. Ask to abide in him. Yes. To remove those things that hinder us from getting closer to him. So that we hunger for him. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory. This altar is open. Hallelujah. Don't we want to get a hold of God this morning? Come on. Come on. Don't we want to search for him this morning? Hallelujah. Don't we want to touch the Lord? I know we all have something that we're looking for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's something we're searching for. Hallelujah. We need answers. We need healing. We need miracles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Have your way this morning in us, Father. Oh, have your way in us, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, that we can seek you. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's an old song that just says, Lord, I will worship you. In spirit and in truth, for I know your love seeks such hearts to hold. You've made me for your pleasure, and you love me beyond measure. Lord, I worship you. In spirit and in truth. Lord, I will worship you. In spirit and in truth. For I know your love seeks such hearts to hold. You made me for your pleasure. And you love me beyond measure. Lord, I worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, I worship you 
in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. How many can worship him this morning? How many can just lift their voice unto God this morning? Hallelujah. 